Ripples and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the Mayfly. And the sun is shining down on the valley, hope to be fly fish to the day that I die. Some folks like horses, cats or a dog. Me, I like fishing with a rod and a fly. Yes, fishing is a favorite pastime of mine. If I couldn't do it, I think I would cry. Life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter, it's fun just to be here and give it a try. Spring has thawed out the long bitter winter, the water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the beaver kill river, might even catch and release one or two. Flies and caddis in the riffles are plenty. The mayflies are courting on fragrant breeze. And the cedar wax wings come down from the heavens, wait for their dinner up in the pine trees. A trout is rising in the far eddy. Make a false cast, then take my aim. If he takes the fly, I feel so much better, and if he does, I'll feel no shame. Water is cold, my waders leak. It's raining now on my favorite stream. I'll bear it all, just a fish with a feather. So when I sleep, I will have a sweet dream. Life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Pools and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the dry fly. And the sun is shining down on the valley, hope to be fly fish till the day that I die. Yes, I hope to be fly fish till the day that I die. Hey folks, welcome to today's show. Today's sh show, we will feature start getting a rod started or some of the basic things needed to build a rod. Building a fly rod is basically pretty simple and I highly recommend everybody out there doing that. Now, uh, if, you, if you don't mind my cats making a noise, they're playing outside the door, we'll just kind of ignore them. Uh, because they don't listen. I can yell at them all I want and they won't listen. But today we're going to build a fly rod or at least get started on some of it. And uh, what I want you to do is think in terms of building your first fly rod. And the best way to do that is to build a kit. And you can order a fly rod kit. Um, this particular one here I got on eBay. I think it was 50 bucks, 60 bucks for a complete kit. That, that means it comes with the cork handle and it comes with the reel seat. Okay, this is a good uh, reel seat here. This reel seat is probably $20. So with the, the kit, I got a pretty good deal because I got a four piece, five weight rod here. So there's a lot of wrapping going on. Okay. And uh, and I got the uh, this cork grip. It's not probably the finest quality, but it's pretty good quality, and it's uh, it's made pretty nice. That's probably ten or twelve dollars. 
and it came with the eyes it came with all the little parts and I think I got a tip top here if I haven't lost it as you recall um, there's the tip top I got the little tip top okay now what I'm gonna do is when you first get the rod in the mail or if you go buy one you have to spline it and what splining is is finding the spine of the rod okay and that's the side the side where it wants to spin towards it's easier to show you on this one it's more difficult to do the thicker rod sections than the thin one but you see here the guides want to spin that way so that's that's where we're gonna put the guides is on the side that it bend towards okay and what I did was I marked it here uh, with masking tape to show uh, where I uh, found the spine okay and that's the side you're gonna put the guides on okay now before you put any guides on there and what I do is I, I get a bunch of little pieces of masking tape ready I stick them onto my little guide oh and I should should tell you a little bit about my uh, guide here this is a, a one by six with a little quarter inch piece of wood put down the center of it with some glue and some little nails and then I made these these track pieces with a little groove in them and these slide up and down I have four of these so I can position them all across to support the rod it very you know if I'm doing a two-piece rod I may need longer ones so that's basically all this is okay very simple and then I have an antique rod wrapper here what this does is it puts tension on the line okay and this one I got in a garage sale somewhere for a couple bucks and it's it's an antique thing and it works okay you can also just take your thread and put it in a box little cardboard box and run it through a telephone book one time make a loop around the book and that will probably put enough tension on it so you don't need a fancy operation my first rod building kit was I took some duct tape and taped a bent coat hanger I just used a coat hanger to support the rod that's how I built my first fly rod but if you really want to have fun and get into it and build several rods you might as well make one of these this is just a, a one or two hour project and you can have your dad help you build that now a lot of, a lot of folks start with um, especially if you're building a two-piece rod you want to put your real seat and handle on the, the butt end first but for this rod since it's a four piece and I basically uh, uh, won't have anything on here right yet I'm gonna put a small piece of wrap here just to uh, dress the rod up but uh, we don't need to worry about that right yet and what we're gonna what you would normally do is you have to remount the base slide this over and, and get it adjusted on there put your real seat on and glue this on but I may do this next week because it's going to take a little more work to get that cork grip fit in there but what I will do today is I will wrap this section here so you can see how it looks and I will also be wrapping one of my guides this guide here needs to be tied on okay and right now it's just stuck with uh, um, masking tape now before you get any of this done you're gonna have to put your fly blank together and be careful because the, the the ferrules the places where the two rods go together is it's very fragile until you get wrappings on it and you should be very careful of it before you can tie the guides onto the fly rod you need to tape them on with masking tape in the appropriate position follow this chart for an eight and a half foot fly rod this will give you a good idea you for a longer rod you may need to change some of the distances but this is basically a good chart for almost any fly rod you build and again if you buy a kit there may be instructions on the distances to place the guides.
If you have any questions, feel free to email me at avkurt at mac.com and I will send you out this same chart. Another step you need to do before you tie the guides onto the rod is to file down the edges of the snake guides. You want to make sure these are nice and sharp. This gives you a nice smooth transition for the thread. Bring my thread over and one way is to tape that. Okay. Some tape on there. That helps hold it. Just going to wrap nice and tight. Can this is where the tension comes in? Got to have the right tension. And we can pull that over that now. Okay. All done with that. We're just going to wrap on here and try to get them nice and tight. Now we can fix it. It's not a big deal. They're not super tight right now. Because we can slide this up. We can move this all up. Okay, we can tighten it up nice and slide it. Okay, so you can put it right where you want it. Now I'm going to be taking this off again anyway because I got to put my cork grip on, but I'm just showing you how to get started with wrapping. Now the first time you do this, this is going to be kind of tricky. But as you can see, I'm just wrapping thread around the rod. You push it down nice and tight. And then when you get down to the final wrap, you put a little loop of thread under that, okay, and wrap it, okay, very simple, 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 I know this is kind of a boring uh, show today, but this one requires a little bit of patience and skill, and your utmost attention is required. There you go. And you can pull this down to tighten it. You get it right to the size you want. Move it, move it around, get it nice and tight. Clip that off, remove your tape, and pull that nice and tight. And now the length of your wrapping is entirely up to you. I like to keep them short and they will hold just as well as, as any other type of wrap or a long one or whatever. They they are very, once this is epoxy this will be hard as a rock and last for many many years of fly fishing. Start the thread for the wrapping of the guide just like you did the ferrule wrappings. Try to keep the line tight and nice and neat. The tricky part is getting when you start going over the snake guide. Want to keep that nice and tight so you don't get any kind of lip there. Make sure the tension is nice and tight and that will keep the line wrapping nice and neat. You can use your finger 
to brush it down so that the wrapping stay nice and tight. One of my trademarks is to just do a simple crossover to the other side of the guide. I will epox, put a small amount of epoxy on that thread to make it nice and hard. I've used this technique for many, many years on many different rods and it works just fine. Actually, I have never lost a snake guide off of any rod I have built. And keep it tight, keep wrapping it nice and tight, use your finger to brush it up. And as you can see, you can spin pretty fast. And when you get nice and comfortable with it, you can go really fast. Keep spinning it and get it on there. And when you get to the point where you think you can uh, make, a, make a loop in a small piece of thread and place it under, just like you did with the uh, wrapping the ferrule, wrap that loop in there and wrap right over it. And you're going to use this to pull the thread back through under the wrapping. This will hold the wrapping tight. You put it through the loop, pull it tight, and your wrapping is done. Make sure you both pull both threads of that, that uh, loop there. There you go, the wrapping is done. Now one of the things I do is I will pull tight on those wrappings and I will always try to do more than I need. That way I can make sure all my guides are equal length. You can simply pull the thread out and it will pull it the wrapping tight and you can get it down to where you want it so that they're all the same size. Push it down nice and tight and there you go. Your guide is done get your razor blade or your exacto knife or your scissors and cut that thread off. Now we'll take the tape off of where we started the guide, wrapping the guide, and we will undo that and do the same thing. We'll pull that thread back through and try to get it so that they're the same length. All you need to do is pull on that end and you will pull it nice and tight and you will basically undo it from underneath the wrecked wrap. And you will pull it and pull it and pull it until you get it down to about the same size. Oops. So you get it to the same size as the other rod. Rod guide, the snake guide. And you get it right there. Pull it, make sure it's nice and tight. And we're going to push the wrapping in nice and tight. You want those wraps to be nice and tight so there's no spaces in them. Well I hope today I have shown you a little bit about how to build a fly rod. I made my first fly rod when I was 17 from a kit that I picked up at the local fishing store. Now, I'd like for you to watch this video clip of the 2002 Kids Fishing Derby that we had at Shenango Valley State Park. So, watch this clip, and I'll be right back.
Good, man. Got some big ones. Got some big ones. Wow. Last year we were out here with t-shirts and shorts. <laughs> you catch any? One. How big? Down there. He kept it on the stringer. You guys catch any? No. Not yet? No. They're out there. You're trying hard? Yeah. And where are they? Uh huh. <laughs> well, at least it stopped raining, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck, guys. Did you get a hot dog? Yeah. yeah. How was it? Good. But we got two. It was better than the fishing, right? Yeah. Tell them what you hope to catch. Okay. I'm going to catch a bass. Why you like a bass? And then he got away. Let's go. Look at that. What in the world? Oh my gosh. Look at that. I had one that whole time. I suck. Dude, he got one. I'm going to get him. I have two worms out. How many pounder is that? I don't know. That looks like a three pounder. Two pounds? That's a, That's a big one. Wow. You gotta get your line out and catch another one. Now. Uh, Dad, where's our oh. bucket? Your I got something. It's a bat. Get it. Oh, dude, you got it. Dude, you can't keep it. it. You can't Woo. keep it, though. Now you get, get Mr. Gazaki. You can, you can put that in the fish tank. But he can't keep it. Where is it? It's a bass. It's a bass. Uh, pretty yeah, good. Good. Keep put it up in here a little bit higher this time. Not bad. Not bad. Now just keep and then keep it pulling about that angle or lay down. Uh, Christopher, do you just, just go down? Uh, I think it's the waves, Mom. Having fun? Um not likely. Not likely. <laughs> You'd have more fun. <laughs> Is that legal or? No, oh, we didn't we didn't fish before. He walked out and put it in his hands. He got it. Okay.
down. I try to catch them, I can never catch them. Here's what you do. Suppose I try to fish while they well, got yeah. really thin mouths from what I've heard. You got your spinning rod. I will mm -hmm. not clear part of line down there very well. That far yeah, up from the hook. Yeah, mm -hmm. You put it on there. It's something I always want to try to do. You put fly yeah, there. Yeah, to catch the best okay. thing to use Just for right 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 a little shit darts. Yeah. And you have to go fly and the bottom. Throw the throw it out. And then you just make the bobber bounce, and that will make the bobber go like this. I don't want to get out there and do that. Hope you folks enjoyed that clip. Hope you enjoyed today's show, and. Join me next week when we uh, try to finish this. We're going to put our, if I can ever get this thing reamed out, we're going to put this uh, cork reel seat on, or, or cork grip on, and we're going to put the little wooden reel seat on there, and we're going to glue that stuff on, and we may even get a chance to start doing some epoxy work on our guide wrappings. Okay? So join me next week as we try to finish up this rod. Um, they're pretty easy to make. It just takes a little bit of time. Uh, you got to do each guide, and you got to do each ferrule wrappings, and and then you go fishing. You know, it's as simple as that. So stay with me. If you have any questions or any kind of answers, email me at avkurt at mac dot com, and I will try to answer my questions or ask you a question or whatever you want to do. So see you next week, all right?